what did we see here? We saw the new Germany team unite with the old Germany team. Um, Germany wins in the last minute, as very, very often. Uh, it is not something that has happened as of late. Let's, yeah, let's put a little bit more light, otherwise I look totally like a ghost. Uh, I don't remember any recent games of Germany winning late, uh, maybe with the exception of that one Poland game at, in 2006. But it is a hallmark of German soccer history, the last minute winner. And it was really needed for this German team. A draw would not have helped them much, because then Sweden and Mexico could have made a sweet 0 0, 1 1, 2 2, whatever it takes to make it not look suspicious. Draw the game. Germany is out, and you don't have to worry about them anymore. Uh, this way, yeah. Uh, Germany has it in its own hands, and they will beat South Korea, and they better beat them by a lot, because goal differential might count. Especially if Sweden beats Mexico, then yeah, you need goal differential. And that also means it hurt Mexico to concede that last goal. Um, now Mexico sits at 3-1 goal differential, Sweden has 2-2, two -two. Sweden wins 1-0, it's 3-2 between the two of them, and Sweden has the uh, direct dual uh, tiebreaker for them. Um, if Germany wins, then it's a three-way tie, then it also depends, uh, yeah, then um, it also looks better. It depends on how many goals are between Sweden and uh, Mexico. Uh, at the moment, Sweden has the upper hand over Mexico if there's a, a total. If there's a tiebreaker, because Mexico would have only one nothing, and Sweden has a 1 2. So if they win 1 nothing against Mexico, 1 1 2 2, Sweden goes through. So yeah, um, Mexico cannot lose the game. Obviously, Sweden must win the next game. Germany must win and better win big. Uh, it's as easy as that. Um, and because that way you avoid the three-way tiebreaker and uh, it becomes a direct final between Sweden and Mexico. Uh, maybe I was a little bit unfair of saying old Germany means new. Germany it was mostly because of the last minute uh, win. Um, the mentality is of course there. Uh, Germans don't give up and I said ahead of the game I don't count out the Germans uh, even if they play badly never count them out I learned so that much you don't bet against Germany at the World Cup um, they did not play particularly well especially in the first half it was a lot like Mexico uh, they came out storming should have probably made the one nothing and then this one counter attack that Sweden launched in the 10th minute just before um, uh, or just at the moment when a really ridiculous statistic that was after that so let's go to the first so there was a big counter attack that Sweden probably should have made it one nothing and probably was even a penalty Boateng's uh, attack came in kind of late so I think it already showed of things to come Boateng was not on top of his game that's for sure and I don't think he will play a lot in the tournament if Germany should progress further. He sh if fully fit, Boateng is the rock in the German defense, there's no doubt about it. But he doesn't look fully fit and he looks a little bit off his game. And for that reason I'm not sure if I would uh, play him that much anymore. But back to the game, that statistic, I think after 10 minutes after the chance they showed. Germany 122 passes, Sweden 6. I don't think I've ever seen something that lopsided before. Um, but Sweden got a hold of the game. Germany, after the attack, so we're vulnerable in the back. Um, we don't want to risk as much. And that's exactly what allowed Sweden to come in, in, into the game. Um, not that Sweden really took the game to Germany, but they ran some counterattacks. Then there was this situation where 
um, so the German player broke his nose and uh, Germany was playing for a few minutes uh, ten, with 10 men uh, Gundogan came on um, and then Sweden scored a goal where I'm not sure if Rüdiger didn't deflect that one in so uh, remains to be seen uh, and at that moment Germany looked dead and buried uh, Sweden could have probably made a second one right there and then and uh, that would have killed off the game but the one thing Sweden doesn't need many chances to score goals but they don't create many chances and they're not really goal scorers uh, but they were very well organized now at halftime uh, the German coach said keep it calm play your game play Sweden tired and that's exactly what happened they came out storming again and made the goal uh, just like in the first half then had some chances um, then the game kind of flattened and uh, that's the one thing that worries me about Germany they don't play fast and especially Gundogan was for me the uh, culprit of making the game not fast and then they has you feel the insecurities in defense um, they tried a lot but Sweden didn't give up much but Sweden wore down a little bit uh, they got a few moments where Sweden could have scored uh, my men scored but they ran some counter attacks but you know I think Sweden was very happy with the 1-1 and going into injury time it didn't look like Germany will threaten a lot and uh, they didn't but they got that free kick and yeah it was a great free kick by Kroos uh, you gotta give it to him so to me Germany will go through uh, and it's between Mexico and Sweden now who will advance and yeah so be it um, I don't think Germany will get eliminated um, despite not having particularly great performances uh, but the curse will not the curse will be broken at least this one this is actually this type of win that will rally a German team and I thought it was brave that Löw um, uh, made four changes he left out Özil who didn't do much and he left out Kedira who didn't do much so he actually subbed in a younger team now if he, he is forced to not play Boateng who got a yellow red on a stupid challenge I think this is not excusable the way he did it um, yeah Homers is injured he is probably forced to play this year uh, most of this younger team as I want and Kroos is actually in good form so you gotta give it to that him as well um, if it was me I wouldn't play Gundogan now Sweden did what Sweden does and yeah they got unlucky um, unlucky in the sense that they got this last minute goal against them that would have more or less secured them qualification uh, not entirely but we know the draw would be looming large in this case so uh, they are gutted and that might actually be their undoing as well so uh, this goal was a big momentum swing I think for a German team if you ask me will the German team repeat as champions uh, at the moment if they don't get their act together I don't see them go beyond the quarterfinals uh, funnily enough if they would play Brazil now I have this kind of feeling that they might do something against Brazil and then fail against a lesser team like Belgium not really a lesser team but um, I'm assuming Germany will become second and Brazil will get first place unless there's some uh, technical considerations by the Brazilians but that's how I see things going and yeah Belgium it would be the quarterfinal opponent and I think Belgium is the team that could really undo Germany because they are an attacking force they might not be as solid in the back but I think against Germany this would be exactly the type of opponent that would get them riled up so for that reason I don't see Belgium uh, Germany I would say is a solid quarterfinal team at the moment I think this will rally them they will probably get in a very good performance one more very good performance and then it probably will end but that's how I see it for the moment yeah the other last thing I want to talk is jersey matchup um, 
I'm glad I made this one switch to the blue shirts. I saw it coming. It's still weird to me to see Sweeney in blue and yellow pants and not the other way around. But I love those blue shirts. Um, I didn't think that the yellow pants fit very well with them uh, because they were rather plain and the blue shirt had all this texture going on. But I really love those shirts. They look really cool, I have to say. I'm not uh, even the shadow pattern, although it doesn't do its stock and so on, but um, that color combination is what makes it great. So that one looked good, and uh, it made a lot of sense against Germany to play it this way. Although I still think, and I've seen Germany play Sweden so often, where Sweden plays in yellow, um, which in a way is the classic matchup that we want to see. Also, this was the third. Europe versus Europe matchup, and the third one that actually produced something. Uh, it was not as great a game as Portugal Spain, even not as great as Serbia against Switzerland, but the tension was high because the world champions were on their way out. And for that, yeah, it lifts, I don't want to say lift up the hype, but because I don't think it was hyped that much, but this was a really, after Germany's lost, uh, game that you marked your calendars for, and you wanted to see it. I'm curious to see how it goes forward, and yeah, I have a suspicion how it will go forward. Told you so. Well, let me know what you think, what you thought about the game, um, what do you think about Sweden and Germany going forward, also Mexico. Um, it is an interesting, interesting, interesting group. By the way, South Korea is also still in the running. South Korea beat Germany, Mexico beat Sweden. landslide victory by South Korea and it might go a completely different route, but I would not bet money on that. Well, I'll talk to you tomorrow. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.